Hey guys, Katie Taylor here with ScrapinKatie.com, where I ask you to let me show you how to preserve your family's memories through the art of scrapbooking. Today's video is using the Stretch the Sketch platform to use Distress Inks to show you how to add a watercolor look to your layout. Here is a little more about the Stretch the Sketch challenge. A look at this month's stretch the sketch where we take a sketch and we can make anything but a 12 by 12 layout from it so you can see right here I usually like to go over the sketch and explain what I like and what I think I'll replicate so I do like the pieces of paper and cardstock going across the middle I don't know yet if I'm gonna use paper or if I maybe will use ink or stencils or something like that I definitely like these bold X's, which represent either an embellishment or some, some sort of design element. And then this little lone circle right here, which, you know, usually in scrapbooking, you try to do things in threes, but I actually am kind of feeling that. So I might actually replicate that. Now, as far as the photos, I'm going to be using these two photos of my daughter just acting extremely silly. Um, this summer and then I think I'm going to have some other design elements for these little smaller spaces now these photos come from my persnickety box if you are not familiar with that it's basically like a subscription service to print your photos so each month you log into the app you upload your 30 photos you want printed and then they're mailed to your home and then I love how um, you have prompts along the sides and then the top of the box. So you can actually write either what's in the box. This one's just various things. So I just put July of 2022, but you have where, when, and who. And that way, no matter how you store it, you'll be able to see those boxes. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna check it out. Again, super affordable and you guys know that I am a proponent of printing your photos. Whether you choose to make pretty little scrapbook pages out of them, that is your business, but at least print them and get them off your phones and your social media. So let me clear the desk, grab some things, and then we can get started. I have decided to use Distress inks. These aren't the oxide inks, these are just regular inks. And the beauty about me working on my glass mat is I'm actually going to just add the Distress Ink directly to my glass mat and then spray it with water and pick it up with my piece of White Daisy cardstock is what I think I'm going to use. So I'm going to just leave a little bit of a border in between just so I don't mix any of these inks and then when I spray it with water I'm pretty sure that they are going to kind of melt together if you will and I do want a couple of longer ones hoping this works out as much in my head as I mean in real life as it is in my head you know how that goes and then Let's see, I definitely want yellow and orange. I think I'm going to skip the red and the green. And I think I'm going to put orange here. And I'm actually going to put yellow on the bottom. Just because that yellow and orange are so similar. That I think if I separate them, it'll look just a little bit better. So there's that. And then I'm going to pull out a spray bottle and spray with water. So here goes nothing. Well, this is new. So let's spray. So I normally use just plain white daisy cardstock, but that looked really juicy. So I do have some cold press watercolor paper and that's what I'm going to be using for this. 
So let's see. Okay, so not exactly what I was going for, but yeah, it might work. Right here, it really got muddied. There's that. And then the beauty of my glass mat is it's just going to wash off. And then I am going to speed the drying along with this using my heat gun. So while I am drying this, I'm going to be drying the front as well as the back to limit the curling of the edges. It's going to happen regardless, but I just find that if you do both, it helps it a little bit. Now is a great time to remind you if you are liking this video so far, go ahead and click that thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, leave a comment, and go ahead and subscribe and sign up for notifications so you'll be alerted the next time I post a crafty video. It helps YouTube show you more videos of the same and it helps my channel out in the process. So one thing I, this kind of turned out pastel-ish I guess if you will, um, not really a pastel person. So one thing I've noticed that if you have a whole lot of pastels, you can actually um, add darker colors. In this case, I'm using the black shimmer brush and it just really, to me, it just makes it look totally different. So here is a look. Look at that shimmer up against those pastel colors. I just, love 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 doing shimmer splatters so now i want to start working on the little bitty elements that will be between the photos and then kind of the gist of the layout so this is the new operation smile stamp set for 2022 the rest of 2022 and uh, 2023 it's called change the world and i love this little saying right here let your smile change the world but don't let the world change your smile that kind of goes with her just kind of being her own person. She's really like that in person. And I love that these photos capture that. The other thing I have are the brand new butterfly layer thin cuts. And I figured, you know, she's young. She's kind of blooming into her own personality. So I'm thinking about using those as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get the stamp set stamped on a tiny little piece of paper, just a little bit larger than that, and then play around with some of those butterfly layers. And I don't think I'm going to use the butterflies. Um, once I started looking at them, I just I think I want to just stick to the stamp set and then a title option. So I am going to, rather than stamp these flowers and cut them out, I'm just going to stamp them in black ink um, on this base page. And then they'll just kind of show behind these photos that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to use probably the majority of these floral images. And again, just black ink. I probably am going to keep the photos about, not really the middle, down toward the bottom. So I th think kind of right there. So I'm just going to pick this up, draw a pencil line there, and draw a pencil line there. And that way I'll kind of know where to keep these stamped florals. So when inking up a brand new stamp set, you want to season it with your hands, especially if it's just an outline stamp like these florals are. You also want to go straight down with your stamp and straight back up. You can see here that I miss a spot, but the beauty of polymer stamps and clear acrylic blocks is I can just go fill it right back in. And then I'm going to just add some of the smaller florals here and there where it's missing. So I'm going to bring these photos back in and see how well I have them lined up. So there's not a whole lot of floral over there. 
which I'm really not liking. I want to see more of that. There's my pencil. Oh, so maybe I'll do that, which then means I need probably a little flower right there. Maybe one right here. So I've got a lot of floral showing there. This can go right there. Title, journaling. Okay, so I think we are done with the stamp set, so I'm going to put that up. I don't want to mat this little sentiment, but it definitely needs something. So I'm just using one of these, I mean, Distress inks and just going along the edge like I do my normal ink pads. And this isn't going to show anything different. It's just going to make it pop a little bit more. And then I am going to get the photos glued down. So I have 3D foam tape right there because I want to make sure that it doesn't go over my photo. And then I have 3D foam tape on the back of here. And I think I want this one higher. So I'm just going to glue this one down. And then this will have 3D foam tape as well. I want this one straight. So for my title, I have these uh, black letters. And they're just die cuts. So you see, you can just punch them out. I love them because not only are they sturdy, but they're a perfect black color. And fingerprints don't get on them, anything like that. So... I don't want to use my title a smile because you have smile several places. Um, I could do bloom because there are flowers, which let's just go ahead and punch that out and see how that's going to look. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to put it just right in this little blank spot right here. Of course I'll straighten it up. So yeah. I think I really like that and I love it up against this kind of purple pink mix. I don't really like these so I think I'm just going to trim them off. Just a little bit too much for this layout especially if they're, they're especially since they are together. Maybe if they weren't together it'd be a little bit better. So I like that. I like that my thread jumbles don't compete with that. I am going to just kind of take that off and see how it looks without them. So I did take both of those thread jumbles off and then I laid them to the side just until I can get this title glued down. And I also kind of did them the way I wanted them off to the side and maybe if I can find some way to glue them while they're on my glass mat and then I can just carry them over to my project that might be a little better so I'm going to start with the M because I know exactly where I want it to go I don't want it to be past this little element so I'm going to start with the M just using liquid adhesive this liquid adhesive just dries so fast. The other thing about this uh, alphabet that I like is it's kind of fun and funky and quirky. And so if it's not straight, it really doesn't matter. And I find that I'm drawn to those alphabets. Now don't get me wrong, a good straight title is really good sometimes, but sometimes you just don't want to you just want to go with the flow and I think that this water color background just kind of lends itself to that natural flow okay I made sure that my B is kind of tucked behind there again to make sure that these elements look like they are cohesive that they belong together instead of all separate so, what do we think about the thread jumbles? I do have some more of these little die cuts. They're hearts. So if I don't use those, 
I'm thinking that I could just use some of these hearts instead to bring the black down. They're just all different sizes and shapes. Just love them. I'm trying to use these that are kind of um, thicker, not these that are elongated. Can you see the ones that are elongated? So I think I like the ones that are thicker. And now I'm just looking for a tiny thick one to go up near the title because I don't, it's already got so much of that dark black up there. I don't want to add too much more, but I think it needs something. So maybe right there. So we may not be doing the thread jumbles. Because if I put it there, it's just going to take away from those flowers. If I put it there. So I don't think we're going to do them. I think we're just going to do the black hearts and then again, my journaling will go down that way. I have these acrylic shapes from the new flower market or flower shop. Um, super cute. But if you recall, you remember that one little element down at the bottom that was all by itself and it didn't have any more? So I pulled that out. Just kind of blends in. That is more like a speech bubble, so I don't want that. These large ones are pretty, but I just think it's too big. So, thinking about that right there. That would be the only acrylic shape. It'd be the only pink acrylic shape. Um, my veteran scrapbooking mine, <laughs> if there is even such a thing says no don't do that you know you're bringing the pink down here you're only using one acrylic shape but that's also what I told you guys that I loved about about that sketch was that one little element so I'm gonna do it I'm gonna use these little micro glue dots to adhere it down I love them for acrylics and I'm not going to put it on the photo. I'm just going to put it where this little spot is in between those two floral pieces. So the only thing that didn't make the cut, let's pull the sketch out back out again. The only thing that did make the cut that I originally liked were these two elements. and just don't think I want to do anything else with this layout. I like it the way it is. I will journal down here. In fact, I don't know if I want to use our new journaling strips or if I want to draw lines. I think I'm just going to draw lines. Again, kind of keeping with the organic feel of the layout. So I'm going to pull out my Versamat. I'm going to get this adhered to it so it doesn't move around. And then pull out my tea ruler and my journaling pen. thought I was done but the more and more I look at it um, even though I want the majority of this top to be blank I just think that these journal lines down here need to be anchored up here as well so I'm just going to do just going to do three 
and that is where I will put the date and the place and that's probably it yeah I like that a whole lot better so don't forget I will leave links down below to any of the products that I used um, if I have a link and then also a link down to the rest of the stretch the sketch girls um, and guys who are playing along this month don't forget that if you aren't already a subscriber hit that subscribe button sign up for notifications if you like this video hit that like button and leave a comment and feel free to share with your friends and family again that helps YouTube show you more videos of the same and it helps my video out or my channel out in the process thank you so much for stopping by and watching have a wonderful week